factoring part three. The last kind of factoring we'll look at is called the difference of squares. It's actually very straightforward. It comes down to finding uh, the difference in terms we're looking for, an expression that has a difference in terms, and we know the square roots, so we know what the roots are. So for example, we have two terms here. We have x squared take away 25. It's a difference because it's take away, and that's important. If this was x squared plus 25, that wouldn't work. Okay, that's not a difference of squares, that's a sum of squares. We wouldn't do that. So it has to be difference. I need to know the square root of the first term, which I do. I need to know the square root of the second term, which I do. And when I have that, the answer is very straightforward. I just square root the first one, which is x and x. I square root the 25, which is 5 and 5. I make one of them negative and one of them positive, and that's it. I can double check and see if I'm right. I can go x times x, x squared. x times 5x is plus 5x. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. And then negative 5 times positive 5 is, uh, sorry, negative 25. We see the positive 5x and the negative 5x go to 0. And I'm left with x squared minus 25. And here I am, x squared minus 25. Same thing here, it's two terms, it's a difference, I'm subtracting. I know the square root of four, I know the square root of 36, I know the square root of x squared and the square root of y squared, so I just go right to my brackets. Square root of four is two, so there's the twos. Square root of 36 is six and six, and then I just put the square root of x squared, which is the x's, square root of y squared, which is the y's. Make one negative, make one positive. It doesn't matter which one. You can have the positive one first if you wanted, the negative one second. It doesn't make a difference. I just simply put, yeah, if I have x squared minus y squared, again, it's going to be x minus y and then x plus y. And again, we could foil it out if we wanted. x times x is x squared. x times y is plus xy. Negative y times x is negative xy. Negative y times positive y is negative y squared. The plus xy and negative xy go to zero, and I'm left with x squared minus y squared, which is that. Now what I want to look at here for a second is the, uh, the great factoring plan. I know there's lots of things you've been looking at factoring-wise, and we need a bit of a plan to say, okay, what do we do when? Okay, so I think the first thing off the bat, what we always want to do first is common factor. We take a look at our expression and we say, is there a number that's common to everything or is there a variable that I can pull out somewhere that's sitting in all the terms? So we always common factor first. It's going to make our life easier. Beyond that, we really have a couple options. We either have a polynomial that has two terms, it's a binomial. We have a polynomial that has three terms, it's a trinomial. Or we have a polynomial that's three or more, which is really going to be four you know, maybe, maybe five, but that's it. We're never gonna give you like 17 terms and say factor it. It's really, it's really gonna be three, maybe four. That'll be the last one. If it's a binomial, we're gonna do a difference of squares. We're gonna do, you know, it's something like x squared minus nine, where we know it just becomes x minus three, x plus three. That's it, that's difference of squares, okay? If it's not two terms, okay, if it's three terms, a trinomial, it's either simple or complex. So this is the ones where we have the three terms. Okay, if it's simple, like we had, I think x squared plus five x plus six was one. I found two numbers that added to that, multiplied to that. If it was complex, we had a number out front. So to say it was three x squared plus seven x plus 10, I would find two numbers that add to seven and multiply to three times 10, which is 30. If, if we're three or four, really, we did the idea of grouping. So we had, say we had a plus b plus c plus d, we try to group up the first two, and then common factor, and we try to group up the second two, and common factor. Now sometimes, again, the point is, I do want you to common factor first. And this is one of those tricky questions. Sometimes they throw a negative one out here and we don't recognize it, but we do have to actually common factor that negative one out. So, because really a negative one, like a one can be factored out of everything and so can a negative one. So I'm just gonna pull a negative one and write it out front. And really what that does is it just flips the signs of all the terms. 
So if I were to put this back in, right, negative one times x, that's negative one x squared, sorry. Uh, negative one times negative two, there's my positive two, and negative one times negative 15 is positive 15. Now once the negative is out and this, this first term here, this x squared is positive, and then I can go back into my, okay, put my brackets down, it's a simple trinomial, try to find two numbers that add to negative two and multiply to negative 15, there's my number and there's my number there. Okay, that's it for today.